Hey eScholars, good to be back with you. And today I'd talk, like to talk about how electric guitar pickups work. Now a lot of us have taken or will take in electronics classes and one of the problems with them is they get pretty abstract. When you start talking about Norton equivalents or Thevenin equivalents or things like that, uh, it gets hard to associate what the calculations with something that's going on physically. And this is maybe a way to fix that. And what I've got here, this is a Squire uh, Telecaster. It's the entry level brand for Fender. So this is an inexpensive, maybe what you call it a student guitar. I like it quite a lot. It works really well. And uh, it's got these on it. Let me move. So you can do this without tripping. Right there and right there, those are electromagnetic pickups, inductive pickups. And what those do is they turn the vibrations of the string, the motion of the string, into an electronic signal, a voltage that goes to my little amplifier over here, my little frontman 10G. And with that, my, my electric guitar works. That is why I'm doing this instead of touring with Clapton. But this is what you get. So let's unplug this and let's think about what's going on here. Okay, these things right here, there's a pickup there and a pickup there. And down here there's a little switch so I can switch back and forth between the two if I like. And these are a, a great example, a great manifestation of one of Faraday's laws that turned into Maxwell's laws. And they use a, a principle called electromagnetic induction that we use all the time for lots of other things. Okay, so here's the idea. Here's what Faraday found out. If you take a coil of wire, okay, maybe one coil, and you pass a magnet through it, you induce voltage. They used to, they used to call it electromotive force. So sometimes you see it called EMF. But the law is, or the, the, the uh, mathematical representation, is this. Now this doesn't look like on first glance like it would be very useful, but what it means is the voltage you induce is equal to N, which is the number of coils that, that they're in, the number of turns that are in the coil, and D phi dt. Well, phi is electromagnetic uh, potential, basically. This is a measure of how fast you're cutting through magnetic lines. So this is the idea, this is the thing that uh, uh, Faraday discovered and Maxwell quantified mathematically, and that's how this electric guitar works. Now, we use this a lot, this in things outside of electric guitars. Anytime you ever see an electric motor, anytime you ever see a generator, this is the equation that makes that work. I have a uh, radio controlled airplane here, just happen to have it with me. I have these in my office for my class. And it's got a couple of electric motors in it. On the back here, there's one. It's, I broke the propeller off and I have to fix it. But there's a little electric motor in there. Well, there's permanent magnets in that motor. Yeah, yeah. And there's coils in the motor. Yeah, right there, yeah, see? Okay, and that's how this, this motor works. Now, if you look in here, there's things called servos. These are little things that make the control surfaces work. Well, guess what's in there? Yeah, yeah. okay, it's the same thing. So we use this all the time. Now, if you have never used a model airplane, which many of you haven't, if you have never even touched an electric guitar, chances are very good that you've already used this in something else. If you've driven in a car or ridden in a car that has anti-lock brakes, the computer needs to know how fast the wheels are turning. Well, how does it know? Well, in, in uh, one way is that the hubs have gears cut into them, or sometimes little slots cut into them, and there is an inductive pickup in there. There's a magnet with a bunch of wire wrapped around it, and when those little teeth go by, it sends a pulse, uh, voltage, to the computer and says, hey, a pulse, to the tooth just went by. The computer just counts how fast those, those teeth are going by. It knows how fast the wheels are spinning. So even if you've, if you've ridden to work or to school or something in a, a vehicle that has uh, wheel speed sensors on it, uh, analog brakes. You've used this law most likely, especially if you actually went into ABS. So let's talk a little bit about how these pickups work. Okay, here's the, we've got the big idea here. Now, what exactly is this? 
if you look at this, there's really not much to it. Right there, you can see there's a little plastic. It's called a bobbin. You wrap wire around it. Those little bright things, those are magnets. Okay, and you can see the heads of those magnets. And there's just wire wrapped around those magnets. That's all it is. And there is a lot of wire wrapped around those magnets. So in principle, if you've got a string that vibrates, and we'll, make, we'll put these little lines here to show that the string is vibrating. Okay, so you've got a moving piece of steel. Well, that doesn't help. Okay, and there's no coil here either. That's the other problem. Remember our equation. N, D, P, D, T. Well, N is the number of turns. I got no turns here. Well, what am I going to do? Well, a long time ago in the, uh, really, it's kind of hard to tell, but late 1800s, early 1900s, certainly by the 1920s or 30s, this idea was in place. The, the history isn't real clear, but uh, practical commercial pickups were around by the 30s. Take a magnet, okay, and wrap wire around it. I'm going to just, okay, that, that's meant to sim, uh, symbolize a coil. And right there, there's your output voltage. Well, by the way, why voltage? Because this is a sensor. Sensors turn something you want to measure into a proportional voltage. That's what sensors do. Well, why voltage? Well, because the electronics we use all works on voltage. Well, I mean, I know there's current and capacitance and all that. But we're trying to send signals around. Almost all the time, we're trying to send voltage. And a signal is just a time-dependent voltage that has some information encoded in it. So when I, you know, let's do this. There's a little jack on the side of this guitar. It's an old-fashioned quarter-inch phono jack. And we use those just because we've always used them. It's a historical thing. Well, there's a quarter inch jack, 6.35 millimeters if you're into metric, and there's the plug that goes into it. When I plug that in, okay, the signal, the proportional voltage comes out of here through this wire, goes from there to my little amplifier. Well, what lives in here? There's the other end of the wire, so it's sending the voltage in there. The voltage has information encoded in it, but it has no power. It cannot run a speaker. Well, that's what this does. The power from the wall runs the amplifier that turns that encoded signal, that, that analog signal that has the music encoded in it, and gives it enough power that it can run the speaker so I can hear it. Right. So that's, that's the big idea here. So let me do this without dropping that. All right, so this is what happens. Now, the problem is for this to work, you've got to cut field lines. Let me get out of your way here. For this to, to work, you've got to cut field lines. There has to be differential motion between the magnetic field and the wire. Well, the wire here, the coil, is wrapped around this magnet. There's no differential motion. How in the heck does this work? Well, if you look at Mag uh, Maxwell's laws, they're reciprocal. If this piece of steel is vibrating in a magnetic field, the field knows it. The field essentially feels the effect of that vibration, and the field wiggles a little bit. Well, as it wiggles, this wire senses that virus, sees that vibration. There is now differential motion between the field and the coil. Bingo, we've got a voltage. Now we've got, now we're in business. The only problem is the field doesn't wiggle very much. Well, how many turns do you need to make this work? Well, this, these are single coil pickups, and uh, that may have six, seven, eight thousand turns in it, okay? many thousands of turns of wire, okay? There's thousands, the N is, is six, seven, eight thousand here, okay? Now, if it's gonna fit in that little package, little package is about that big, I have a bag of, of uh, bobbins here. Let me open that up for you. If you wanna make, your, make pickups, it's not too hard. This is a bobbin. Let's see if I can get that to focus, there we go. All right, there we go. That's a bobbin. The holes in it are where the magnets go, and that's where the wire goes on. This is how big this is, okay? There's not, it's not very big. Here, you wanna really go bonkers. As I picked that, just banged another guitar over there. There, okay, that's about how big this thing is. Less than three inches, is that right? 
All right, for this to work, you're gonna need a lot of turns, 6,000 turns or so. That wire has to be really, really fine. And friends, it is. In old-fashioned English wire gauges, it's uh, 42, 43, 44 gauge. Practically speaking, it means it's about the size of a human hair, that thick human hair. If you wanna break this stuff, you grab it and just go dink and it breaks, right? So you have to be very careful while you're winding a pickup. So that's how this thing works. This is a simple case of electromagnetic induction, a straightforward application of Faraday's laws. And it's very clever in that instead of making the coil and the magnet move with respect to each other, they made this string makes the field move that the, that the, so that the coil can then sense it. This is an electromagnetic pickup. This is what's called a single coil pickup. Now it has one flaw in it in that that 6,500 turns of wire, which is the nominal, it's about 6,500, looks an awful lot like an amplifier. Well, I'm surrounded by 60 hertz electromagnetic noise all the time because in the United States, um, our mains power runs at 60 hertz. You're, if you're in a different country, it may be 50 hertz in your country, but it's almost always one of those two. Well, what that means is this sometimes can't tell the difference between string motion and the electromagnetic noise that's just in the air around us. If you could see 60 hertz noise, most buildings in the United States would be very, very bright. Okay. Um, again, if you're a country, if it's 50 hertz, then fine. It's 50 hertz, it would be very bright. So when you plug this in and if you don't shield it, if you don't uh, take steps to uh, protect it from that noise that's in the environment, it hums and it goes, mm, you can hear it. Well, there's another kind of pickup called a humbucker. Now, if this video turns out to be popular, if I get some hits on it, I'll go ahead and do humbuckers as well. I'll be happy to do that. So there you have it, folks. Simple case of Faraday's law, electromagnetic induction, applied to a practical purpose to make an electric guitar. Hope this helps, and I'll see you next time.